All right, so this has to do with preparing a presentation on an image for image competition, and we're creating a digital map. So uh, if you're new to competition, you may not be familiar with the concept of a digital map, and I know I wasn't when I first entered, and so this is just to kind of show you real quick how to do that using Photoshop. This is not about whether or not this is a merit-worthy image or whether or not this would do well. Um, this is simply, simply a technical how-to on how to create a digital mat really quickly and easily in Photoshop. I'll show you two ways that work for me. Uh, the first way is to create a new document and go ahead and create it at the right dimension. So we'll just have, make sure that we have the long dimension and on a vertical image, 4,000 is gonna be our long, uh, the long dimension is gonna be the vertical. So you want that to be at least 4,000 pixels. Um, and 4,000 pixels I think is the requirement for entering images uh, digitally in competition. And if you're gonna enter a printed image in competition, you still have to enter a digital version of that exact same piece in it to accompany the the print so um, I'm gonna go ahead and make that a resolution of 300 the resolution is less important than um, the actual pixel dimensions I like to use a color profile of Adobe 98 um, check with the competition rules and see if it specifies I don't know that it does um, but sRGB is usually fine for submission I print inkjet and I found that with the particular printer that I have and the paper I use, the Adobe 98 profile uh, works really well. So we'll go ahead and create our new document. And one way to do this is to create a matte opening. So I'll just simply grab my marquee selection, kind of make an area that I think would be about right, and I'm not gonna worry about it too much. I'm just gonna kind of plop it in here, kind of like this and I'm going to create a new layer and fill it with black. So the foreground color is black, option, backspace, or delete will fill that with black. I want to make sure this is centered up and you, you may not want this to be centered creatively. You may want to actually have your mat off to the corner like this, but I'm going to show you how to center it real easily. If you just select the layer that we've created for our opening and the background layer, and if you look up here at the top, you'll see align vertical centers and you'll see align horizontal centers. So I'm going to click on those and we'll just know that this is in the middle. So we'll click on both of these there and there. So it's lined that up in the center. We go ahead and grab our image. I'm going to just hit command A to select all, command C to copy and we'll drop this in. You'll see that the image size is actually bigger than the opening, so I'm going to click to make a layer mask. We'll just click on that thumbnail. Can fan click on the thumbnail and we'll make the layer mask and now we can click here on create new mask and now we have that mask. You'll see that by default the mask is linked to the actual image that it's masking and so if you unclick that, you'll be able to kind of move this around and we'll sort of reframe um, just however we want to do that. Make sure that you're on the image and not the mask. And so we can kind of reframe this as we see fit within here and get it to where we like it, kind of move it around and go ahead and commit that. And you may not want to have a white mat around the edge, so you may want to change the color of that. So the easiest way to do that is to just double click on that background layer to unlock it and double click on it again. We'll create a color overlay and you can either select a color from somewhere in the image itself. Uh, you may want to just give it a black mat. In this case, I think I'll just give it a black mat. Click OK. Uh, let's put a stroke around that. So I'll double click on the image layer. We'll hit the stroke. If you select the position to be inside rather than outside, it gives it a cleaner corner. Um, you may want to sample a color from somewhere in the image and then we'll drop the opacity down a little bit so that we don't want the stroke to overpower the image. And now we have a nice presentation. 
The other way to do that without actually resizing and, and transforming the image and kind of crunching all those pixels in there, this is one way to do it and it's not a bad way, but another way that if you want to take that original image, um, what I do first is probably make a copy of it, but I'm going to take that background layer and double click on it to unlock it and turn it into a regular layer. And now that we have a regular layer, we're going to use the crop tool to do an inverse crop. So I'm going to drag that to cover the entire image and then I'm going to pull that crop tool out so we're instead of cropping off we're adding extra space around it so you can kind of see how much space you're going to add around this and once you commit that you'll see we have blank space around the image area and this is where we can put our mat and what we've done is effectively expanded the canvas dimensions around the image layer and this prevents us from taking any of those pixels and stretching them out or making them smaller and this is kind of assuming that you've already cropped the image about to where you want it anyway if not you could still do masking to refine that but I can simply add another layer behind there put a black mat and we can do the same thing we did before if we wanted to add a stroke to it and just sample a little area in here make sure that's on the inside and we'll pull that opacity down just a hair. So this is another way to create that presentation. This is gonna be much larger than the 4,000 pixel uh, requirement. So once you're done with this, I would save it as a JPEG or um, save the Photoshop layers and then maybe save a, JPEG, a flattened JPEG. But if you flatten that and you come back with the crop tool, you can actually make it 4,000 pixels. But you may wanna save this as a master because this is gonna be a file that's a much larger dimension. So if you wanna print it bigger or, or do something else, or just have you know a larger master that's, that's the size of the original image that came out of the camera, um, you can do that as well. So we're just gonna go up here with our crop tool and we're gonna manually enter on the height. We're gonna enter 4,000 pixels. And so we can just drag our crop tool around here go all the way to the sides we're going to go ahead and commit that hit enter and we know now that the long dimension we can go verify it with image size but we can see that the long dimension is now 4,000 pixels but we were able to go ahead and create that map without doing anything that was going to scale that image so those are the two ways that I've used successfully to scale images and, and put them in a digital map for a presentation for image competition. Uh, you may have another way and that's fine, but these are the two ways that, that I know how to do it that I've done frequently and it's worked out really well. So hopefully that if you're new to competition and we're unsure of how to create that digital mat, um, those are two ways that are really easy to do that. Hope to see a bunch of people enter in the PPSC competition this year. Um, it's only $10 an entry and you can enter up to eight. So if you've never done this before and it's your first time, your four highest scores get added together. You can get the, the award for the Lamar Williamson School of Photography. It's a full scholarship. So um, the winner of the highest score as a first time entrant gets that. So there's another reason if you haven't entered before, go ahead and do that. Put at least four in there so you can you know tally up those, those numbers. Um, if you wanted to enter more than four, your, your top scores are the ones that are chosen for that cumulative score all of the lowest the four lowest scores will get thrown out but um, anyway it's a great way to get feedback on your images uh, learn how to do things better you're going to hear the judges talk about them um, it's, it's a really cool thing to experience if you haven't already uh, just know that no matter what the judges say about your images you know that next time you pick up the camera you're going to be thinking about things that are going to make your photography better so again, uh, this is not necessarily a merit image, but this is the one I wanted to use just as an example to show you technically how to create that digital map. I uh, hope to see a bunch of people at the South Carolina Photo Convention. Thanks.